Hey guys, so it's Shane here from Laser Gaming. This video, I want to review the Black Ops 4 beta from the perspective of someone who actually plays other games. So a lot of these people um, that post Black Ops 4 reviews, and while they're perfectly fine, are mostly Call of Duty players. Um, but I play a ton of Battlefield, and I just sort of wanted to give my opinion um, from that perspective. Before we get into this video, just like say, if you are new here, don't subscribe down below for much more content on everything Black Ops and in the Battlefield universe. Uh, but let's just get right into the video. So Black Ops 4, while it may be claimed to be a clone of Black Ops 3 or pretty much just the same old Call of Duty every year, is one of the most different Call of Duties we've had in a very long time. Pretty much since they made the transition to advanced movement games, I'd say that this game is as different or as big of a transition from Call of Duty World War 2 as Ghosts was to Advanced Warfare. Um, and this kind of just starts with one, the time to kill, um, the healing mechanics, and sort of the team play that's actually involved in the game. This is really the first Call of Duty where if you're working together as a team and you have a good composition with your specialists, you will beat the other team. Um, even though previous Call of Duties like Black Ops 3 and Infinite Warfare had specialists, they didn't really work together like the ones in this game. In this game, you can barricade off lanes, you can support your team by healing them up to 200 health, um, you can basically stun enemies for your team to later fight. Um, and most of the specialists in this game really revolve around team play. Um, where specialists in games like Black Ops 3, for example, the predecessor to this, um, really were just centered around individual play, such as weapons and abilities like camo that made you sort of um, stealth from the enemies and stuff like that. This one is heavily focused on team play and sort of aiding your team. Almost every single one, except for maybe Ruin, um, is focused on aiding your team, but even Ruin can be used for rushing and sort of supporting your team uh, by being the first one to push up using his grappling hook and gravity spikes. Um, now the gunplay is something that's very different in Call of Duty as well. Uh, the time to kill is much longer. It's around five to six shots to kill on average instead of like three to four. Um, some guns are still four shots to kill, but that's only if you upgrade them with attach attachments and stuff like that. And that's something else that's different in this game is that Using a weapon for an extended period of time is heavily rewarded in this game. The attachments that you unlock are known as um, operator mods at the end of, the, of a weapon, or sort of when you rank it all the way up to the max rank, are by far the best attachments. And I sort of like how they balance this, because they gave them extremely good attachments, and they're extremely powerful, but they take up three spots of your creative class. So you kind of have to weigh the positives and negatives. Do I want to use this attachment um, that is makes this gun an absolute beast, but at the same time I have to sacrifice quite a bit to do it? I kind of I always wanted that in creative class. I kind of like how Ghosts did that with perks in creative class, um, but I really like how they're doing it to a certain extent with attachments in this game. Now in addition to this, and I think this is an addition for Blackout because it doesn't really play out too importantly in um, public matches or in multiplayer, um, is the fact that the weapons actually have tracers now. Um, so they're sort of using the system that's in Islands of Nine and it's not like Battlefield system where every weapon um, has travel velocity and bullet time. What they do is within close quarters, um, everything's hit scan. And I actually do like this. This sort of makes the arcade and fast paced gameplay um, still feel normal and the gunplay still feel very tight and um, sort of rewarding like it has in previous CODs. Um, however, um, like in Battlefield, if you're using a submachine gun at long range, you're going to have to lead your shots. So there's a certain range where it switches over to a um, not a hit scan system, but it switches over to a bullet velocity and sort of a travel time system like in Battlefield. And they definitely did this for their blackout mode um, and they wanted to have a similar feel um, like in multiplayer. So they made the weapons at longer ranges have travel time so you actually have to lead your shots. Something that I thought would be an issue in blackout, but it seems to work out pretty well in public matches. And I think that they actually nailed the system down, which is pretty cool. Um, some of the negatives in this game, I'd say, are just the fact that if you are playing solo, um, it's a lot harder. Unlike previous Call of Duties, um, you can't just slay an entire team solo. Well, you still can, but it's much harder. Whereas if you have a team working with you, it is much easier. Um, it's just kind of weird to think of Call of Duty or this Call of Duty is much more of a team play oriented game than previous CODs. Um, and while it's not like Battlefield where you truly have to rely on your teammates, especially in Battlefield 5 for health and ammo and stuff like that, um, there really is an element of that. Like if you're not using a crash on your team, you're really going to run out of mags a lot more and you have to run scavenger. 
Whereas if your team is running a crash, you can resupply your team with ammo pretty consistently and you won't really have to worry about running a scavenger. Um, so if you have a team, um, it definitely makes your lives a lot easier. There are perks to sort of work around not having the right composition and playing solo, but you can pretty much load everything up into your gun if you want um, and just deck out your gun with cool attachments if you have a team that's willing to support you, which I think is really cool. And I think it just creates a lot more dynamic gameplay, and you can sort of mess around with compositions, and playing with your friends isn't just the same thing where, oh, I got a UAV for you, or oh, there's guys over here. You really can um, elevate the success of your team by playing with your friends um, or playing with even a competitive team. Now something that this game is probably going to have, well they've said they're going to have, is a good rank system. Now I think that this game is one of the CODs that truly has good competitive potential. Um, now all Call of Duty's pretty much in the past have been competitive, but what's been different is that competitive is always 4v4, whereas public matches and multiplayer is always 6v6. Now this is alienating to a lot of people because they'd be playing a different game um, than the actual competitive players were playing. And this was kind of hard because if a new viewer wanted to watch, they'd get kind of confused, like, why aren't pros using this gun? Why is this gun banned? Why is this perk banned? Um, why are, are these maps banned? And stuff like that. Um, whereas if it's this year, they seem to really design the maps around 5v5 and 5v5 competitive. So I think that competitive will be 5v5 this year, and I think it'll really um, probably be the most viewed or most competitive Call of Duty in recent memory, which I think is going to be uh, really good. Now, obviously, this isn't a full review of the game. We still have Blackout and Zombies, um, but I think that this game is still in a pretty complete stage for a beta. Um, we have six maps, six modes, I believe, um, and quite a few weapons. The only one that's lacking is the LMGs, or is only one LMG. And I think that's something that really can aid this game as well, is the amount of sort of feedback Treyarch's willing to respond to. Uh, one of the biggest strengths of this game is the fact that Treyarch's developing it and the support that they've shown for the game already. So after the first weekend of the beta, there's a ton of feedback. And they basically, a bunch of the elk was, some machine guns were too overpowered, some people said sliding was too overpowered, jumping was too overpowered, and all that stuff. Treyarch fixed that all. They fixed a bunch of it in the first day. They rolled out a hot fix. And they fixed a bunch more of it by the second weekend. Um, they updated the game modes. They did all that stuff. And um, they buffed score streaks, which I'll talk about in a bit. Score streaks are still a bit underpowered. Um, but when the community didn't like a lot of those changes because they made pretty drastic changes, such as they nerfed sliding a ton, they nerfed jumping a ton. People were like, what the heck? We liked how this was a fast-paced boots-on-the-ground game, and we want those mechanics back. Treyarch, within hours of the hotfix going live, reverted a lot of that stuff that the community didn't like that they changed back instantly. And I think that that's something that a lot of other developers can learn from because Treyarch has no reason really to listen to the community. Treyarch knows that they're the best Call of Duty developer. They have yet to release a bad Call of Duty. They had World at War, Black Ops 1, Black Ops 2, and Black Ops 3. Um, you could argue that all of those, or at least Black Ops 1, Black Ops 2, and Black Ops 3 are all within top 5 Call of Duties um, up there with Modern Warfare 2. And so Treyarch really has no reason to say oh, we, they have... Treyarch really has a reason to think that they know exactly what they're doing, and yet after all these years they still listen to the community um, so much, and I think that's really what makes them great, and that's why I think Black Ops 4 actually will be a great Call of Duty, is because they will listen to the community. Call of Duty World War 2 was the opposite, they did not listen to the community until February or March, and I think they finally made the game actually decent, but it took them 6 months. And we see this with other developers too. Battlefield 4, 6 months it took to make a good game. Battlefield 1, arguably a year before they implemented Time to Kill 2.0. And I think that with Black Ops 4, Treyarch pretty much instantly fixed a ton of the stuff that people were complaining about within like a day or two after people complained about it. And I just think that is super cool. And lastly, I just want to talk about two more things. I want to talk about how... Um, I'll talk about streaks first because it's a bit of a smaller issue. And then I'll sort of just talk about the last good thing about this game. So streaks in this game are kind of trash now that's sort of something i'm hesitant to say because the score streaks themselves are actually really good but the maps are very bad for them and sort of the meta that treyarch has implemented in the game is bad for them so treyarch made ghost and cold-blooded two of the first perks that you unlock 
and I think that's just a massive mistake. Ghost should be like the last perk you unlock along with Dead Silence. Um, I think the stealth perk should always be last, and the reason why is so that score streaks can be successful. If you always have people running around from rank 1 with Ghost, score streaks aren't going to be good. No matter how powerful you make the score streaks are, they won't be good. I get the AC-130 multiple times in this game. I might even have it shown in the background gameplay, but I wasn't able to see anyone on the enemy team. I could see like one to two guys because everyone was running Ghost and Cold Blooded. It was so frustrating when you get a 1600 point streak and you finally get that massive, super powerful streak in the game and you're just decimating these one to two players that don't have Ghost, but you can't even really see the other people. Um, so I think the simplest fix to this is that um, they move Ghost and Cold Blooded towards the end of the uh, level progression because when people prestige and stuff they'll only be able to use them for a few levels um, the other f the other one is hard to fix because a lot of the maps are just simply based indoors um, I think the throwback maps that are coming like jungle and stuff like that are based outdoors so those will be a lot easier for streaks um, like jungle and um, Hollywood I think from Black Ops 2 and that kind of stuff those ones are based outdoors, so that'll be really good for streaks, but the current maps in this game, while they are really good, the map design is amazing. I think Treyarch pretty much nailed every map in this game. The only one they really don't like is Payload, um, but a lot of people like that map too. Treyarch just really hit the maps out of the park. The main thing is that a lot of them are based indoors, so they're not good for streaks. You can do what you did in Black Ops 3, and you can put a lot of windows in the roofs and stuff so streaks can get in. I think that would be a good fix for it, um, but as of right now, they kind of do need to fix that if they want streaks to be as powerful as they have been in Black Ops 3 and Black Ops 2, and those are some of the main attractions to those games for how powerful the streaks are. Um, and then lastly, Black Ops 4 is really the first game that rewards you for playing the game a lot. Um, while you could get really good at Call of Duty, you could, I, I got, I played Infinite Warfare a ton, that was probably my most played Call of Duty. And I say that I haven't really improved at the game since my first 500 hours. Once I played 500 hours of that game, I didn't really get any better. Um, honestly, the same can't be said for Battlefield because there's so many different aspects of the game. Like in Battlefield 4, I got really good at using the Engineer class for my first couple hundred hours, um, but then I switched over to Sniping and I'd say that's my best class now. Um, and then I got really good at tanking, maybe even a thousand hours into the game. Um, I decided to just pick up tanking to get really good at that. Um, but in Black Ops 4, if you pick a gun, you can get really good with that gun. Um, I, I picked the one that was like the Scar H. I honestly forget what the name is. There's so many different guns, and I've been traveling and stuff, and it's hard to keep track of the names. It's just easy to sit down and play. But I picked the gun that was like the Scar H, and that was the gun that I got really good with. By the end of the beta, I could control that gun's recoil so well. I knew how to tap fire it, and yes, you actually need to tap fire some guns in this game if you want to get perfect accuracy with them, which is something that's almost unheard of in COD, actually having to tap fire. Um, I could tap fire people at long range, pick them off, head glitches and stuff like that, um, with a gun that I thought had absurdly insane recoil at the start. So Call of Duty for the first time has predictive recoil, something that seems unheard of in the franchise. It's something that really rewards you for sitting down and learning a weapon. And I think that's something that's super, super cool. And I think it's something that will make this game uh, really rewarding and awesome to play in the future. Um, I know I didn't really even talk about everything in this game and we're already at 14 minutes for this video So I'm probably just gonna end it here I do think this is gonna be a good year for Call of Duty, especially with blackout and zombies uh, The only downside is that there is no campaign, but it seems like they're kind of making zombies the campaign They have a really in-depth zombies uh, with a cool story uh, multiple maps at launch I think it's just gonna be really good uh, don't forget to stay tuned for my Battlefield 5 review. I'll probably do one after the beta. I'm going to have some videos of the closed alpha coming up over the next few days. As they do have access to that. Uh, but again, boys, don't forget to drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you are new here. That's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.